What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to do a real comparison between the Shimano SLX and the Corrado 200K. So I'm going to do this video a little bit different than some of the real reviews you may have already seen. I'm going to start with the basics of each reel and then I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to leave you a timestamp down here to go into the details of stuff. I'm going to try to avoid, at least till the very end, to give you any subjective information. Uh, I'm going to show you the actual design differences between the two of these and let's help you decide which reel that you want and then I'll give you my two cents on which one I prefer for different applications. So let's go. If you like what you see in the video today, please give me a like on the video and a subscribe to the channel and you'll get included on the upcoming videos. All right, so to set a baseline, I want you to know that I am an avid Shimano user. I have several of their bait casters. I have two of the Corrado 200Ks, a Corrado DC, a Corrado 300K, a regular base Shimano SLX, and an SLX DC. I've been using all of these reels over the last several years and have great success with them. And I wanna to explain to you why I bought each one of these and why they're on each setup. If you'd like to review what combos I have, I'll link a card up here where I go through each rod and reel, what I use them for, and why I use those specific reels. Let's talk price point. So you're probably already familiar with the price point between these two reels. That's how you ended up here. That's where you're doing this research. But let's touch on that real quick. So the Corrado 200K starts in at about $180 and the baseline Shimano SLX starts at right at $100. There's a couple of flavors in between that. You can get an SLX XT, which I'll touch on some of the differences there for about another $30. And then there's like the SLX MGL and the DC, but we're gonna focus on the base $100 SLX and the base Corrado 200K and talk about the design differences and kind of what's in between them. It's not crazy to hear about a sale on Shimano Reels. They did that for uh, Black Friday from Tackle Warehouse. There was a 20% off. Academy has done that for the last couple of years at 20% off. So if you're patient enough, you can get, make the difference between the SLX and the Corrado about $64 if you take 20% off the, each one of them. And I think you're getting to a point where it makes sense to jump to it personally, but let's go through the details. Starting with line capacity, so the Corrado 200K has a 200 size spool and that will hold 110 yards of 14 pound mono compared to the SLX, which it has a 150 size spool, which will hold 90 yards. Both of those are perfectly adequate capacities. So you're not really gonna see any significant differences there. The only thing I'd really consider the higher line capacity for if you're really getting the full cast out of every cast that you make. Like when you're deep diving, uh, running a deep diving crankbait or something like that, where you want to bomb it out as far as you can. And you, you, what happens when you start to use up that line capacity is it requires higher spool speed. So it starts to limit casting distance. So if you're going to run that SLX out to the end or almost to the end, you'll be better off getting a reel with a higher capacity. Next up is going to be weight. So the Corrado comes in at 7.6 ounces and the SLX, base SLX, is at 6.9 ounces. So about three quarters of an ounce difference between the two. So take your big jigs or three quarter ounce jig, put that in your hand and that's going to be the difference there. Not a huge difference. Uh, you know, it will really only come to play if you're doing something that requires a lot of rod movement. You know, something like where you're doing a, a jerk bait or something, right? Where you have to constantly move it and that extra weight will add up at the end of the day. But overall general use, throwing shatter bait or something like that, I don't think you're going to notice the, the three quarters of an ounce difference between the two. Looking at gear ratios, the Corrado comes with a 7.4 to 1 ratio and the comparable SLX HG comes in at 7.2. Pretty minor difference between them. What that means from a line recovery rate is each crank of the Corrado is 31 inches of line coming in and each crank of the SLX is 28 inches. So a three inches, you know, three inches per revolution. Again, don't get caught up in that detail, it's pretty minor. Both of these reels come with a Hagane, however you say it, frame. And what that is, is you know, a, a very high quality frame to the reel. Um, and that's really what you start getting at the $100 price point is something that's a bit more durable. Both of these have, the, like I mentioned, the same material and they are very strong when it comes to winching in a fish or doing some flipping or heavy crank baiting or something like that. You're not gonna feel that distortion when you lock up that reel in a hook set or something like that that you would get out of those $60, $80 reels. So comparably, the frame on both of these reels are the exact same. I wouldn't consider that a discernible difference between the two. 
So let's get into the good stuff. This is gonna be a little bit more in depth than you'll find elsewhere. This is where I put my engineering hat on and we start looking at the parts diagrams and I'm gonna walk you through some of the differences between these two, why one is heavier than the other and why one is more expensive than the other. I got my laptop here so we'll go through those parts diagrams. So what I've highlighted here are the bearings in the reel. So the SLX has three plus one bearing. So three ball bearings plus one roller bearing. The SLX XT has four bearings plus one and that's common with the XT and the DC. And when you jump up to the Corrado, you go to six plus one. I'm just going to start off with the base model SLX 150HG. What's shown here are these three bearings here in green. These two on the bottom and the bottom right are going to be associated with the spool. So these are just your basic spool bearings. Every reel on the planet has those and there's not really a uh, comparable difference between any of these reels when it comes to spool bearings. What comes into play is going to be the difference between the bushing on the ring gear and the one bearing on the pinion gear. So shown here, I'm gonna highlight this a little bit. This is the pinion gear, so this is what's actually turning the spool. Uh, the spool comes through the center of this pinion gear and it's tied to that when you engage it. And if you follow it back, it has this bearing here, ball bearing, which is great. That's, that's really going to the frame of the reel and that gives you that support there on the, I call it the aft side of the pinion gear. The other side of the pinion is really just supported by the actual roller bearing itself and there's nothing going on up here to provide additional support to it. So you may, what you may end up with is a little bit of deflection here on the pinion when you really load it down. And that's what I'm going to harp on between these reels is loading it down. When you stand at Bass Pro Shops and you're gonna reel each one of these, there's not gonna be a whole lot of difference in smoothness between them, at least not in my opinion. The difference is gonna show up when you start loading it down, when you're throwing a 10 XD, when you're flipping, when you're frogging, when you're really trying to put the load through that reel. And that's what I'm gonna show you here. And this is gonna be the ring gear, right? So this ring gear ties to this pinion gear when you turn the handle. And if we follow this back, it comes up to this red, this red item here. And what this is, this is a bushing. So I, I think most people understand the difference between a bushing and a bearing. So a bushing is, you know, really just a fixed circle, and you have a full-size pin, if you will, pin surface that's completely, uh, completely round going in between it. So as long as you have some sort of oil there, it will work fine. It, it, you know, it's more or less like a door hinge, right? It's more of a bushing type surface. It's not really known for smoothness or speed or anything like that. And uh, like I mentioned, it's it's not the ideal not the ideal type component for that. And you'll see it as we go through these remaining reels. So those are the three bearings shown in green. Um, the one roller bearing I don't have highlighted here because it's common between all of them. But do notice that on the top left of this image here, we do have a bushing at the end of, with just one single bushing on the end of the ring gear. The SLX XT. All right, so the XT, like I mentioned before, is a four plus one roller bearing, a reel. And it's a little bit more expensive. It, we'll touch on it on the braking section, but this one, it gives you that extra bearing and I'll show you where that is. And I've got those four bearings highlighted here. We're gonna start off like we did before on the spool. So we have one, two bearings here that go to the actual spool itself. No discernible difference there between the SLX and the SLX XT when it comes to that bearing. Now we're gonna move back up. So we have, uh, to reorient you, we have our pinion. And again, we have this bearing here shown in green that is the other side. So common with the SLX and the XT is a pinion, one bearing uh, at the back side or the aft side of the pinion. What's gonna be different here is when we get up to this ring gear drive again, and following that back, we have a green, a highlighted green bearing there. So on the SLX, we have a bushing there. On the XT, we have a ball bearing. That's gonna be an advantage, and it will be a little bit smoother than the base SLX when you start loading it up. But as we go to the next one, which is the Corrado, you'll find that it's still not quite there to what the Corrado has to offer. So here is the Corrado 200K diagram, and we're gonna to start to see the differences between the base SLX at three bearings, the XT at four bearings, and the, the Corrado at six bearings. So we're gonna start down here at the spool like we did with the other ones. We have this guy here, this is the aft spool bearing, and this one here is the other side of the spool bearing. So those two, like all the other reels on the planet, are going to be supporting the spool when you go make your cast. What's different here is we have this one now. This, this third one is actually a larger inside diameter, and you can see that 
that's going to accept another component in it to help support it. So let's go up here. So this, the inside of this bearing is going to be supported by this little tail that's on the end of the pinion. That tail is not on the SLX pinions at all. So now the pinion has a second bearing on it, which is going to be supporting it. So if you can imagine, I'm going to show in the image here how small this pinion gear is, and it has two bearings on it. So that sucker is well supported when it comes to any type of loading. When you start grinding on that handle, that pinion is not going anywhere. It's well supported, and it's supported by bearings, not bushings. Let's go up. So here is our ring gear again to reorient. On the aft side, like the SLX XT, we have a ball bearing on the back side. So we're still upgraded over the XT, but we're in line here with the XT, but an upgrade over the base SLX. But there's still one more bearing. That's five so far. The sixth bearing, if we follow this ring gear back, it joggles over here, comes through, and now we have this bearing. This is the sixth bearing, and this is supporting the ring gear drive on the other end. So we have the pinion supported on both ends by ball bearings, and what I'm showing here is now the ring gear drive, which is supported by ball bearings on both ends. So all of the load that you're putting through that reel, when you're using all your horsepower to crank that 10XD down, that's all supported by ball bearings, and that load is going straight through the gears like it's designed to. There's not going to be any deflection there. There's not going to be a bushing that's crooked and loaded weird. You're going to get the best gear mesh that you can get. And that moves into the next one. It's going to be the micro module gear set. That micro module gear set is exclusive to the Corrado and starts from there. The SLX and the SLX XT have their traditional brass gears with a little bit more coarse tooth pattern on them. And I'll try and show that here in the image. So you can see on the left is the traditional gear set, on the right is the micro module gear set. And that micro module gets you a couple of things. You have to have those gears supported well enough that there's no deflection because those teeth are so fine. And when you do that, you're able to get more tooth engagement. So that comes back to, it's not gonna feel any different really when you're reeling it just at Bass Pro Shops or something, then you load it down. I'm gonna keep harping on that. When you load it down, you will start to see the efficiency of that gear cut as well as the additional bearings within this reel. So the, I'm gonna compare this to, you know, like a Rolex versus like a Timex watch, right? When you see that Rolex that has a much smoother move to it, that's kind of where you're going towards with the better gear set. It's going to perform a little bit better. It's going to be more efficient. The next one is going to be drag. So both of these reels, actually all three of these reels are rated to 11 pounds of drag, which is no problem. You can reel in whatever you want with 11 pounds of drag within reason. I mean, I wouldn't be throwing a big swim bait on it, but 11 pounds of drag is just fine. What the difference is, is the Corrado has a cross carbon drag washer in it, which is a upgraded uh, composite washer for the drag system. And I'm gonna compare this to more like a um, high performance clutch or different compound brake pads, whether you want to, I'm gonna to go to cars, if you want to run a street car with low dust, or if you want to run an autocross car where you need heat as soon as possible, or a road racing car where you need long-term braking performance. There's different applications of compounds for the intended use. Now, the, carbon, the cross carbon washer in the Corrado will be a little bit more um, adjustable. So, you know, if you're adjusting your, your drag on the SLX, and I'm gonna just, pick an example that, you know, oh, one, two clicks is too tight, one click is too loose, and you can't really find exactly what you want. The Corrado will be a little bit more tunable there, but that's probably not gonna stop a whole lot of people. You know, you can usually find what you want with the SLX. I use the SLX and the, and the SLX DC. I have no problems with the drag. The big difference is, is gonna be when you get towards that 11 pounds of drag, and you start really screaming that reel. So if you want to uh, target higher quality fish or more trophy fish where you're going to be perhaps using that drag more than you would with an SLX reel, then the additional performance that you get out of that carbon drag washer is going to be uh, noticeable then. But more instances than not, the SLX drag is going to be just fine. But do know that the Corrado does have a higher performance drag in it. So let's go into the braking system, the SES Infinity, which is found on the Corrado reel. The Corrado reel is equipped with an external knob here. It's really small, but it's shown on the bottom here, which you can actually palm and make minor braking adjustments with while you're reeling in your bait. You don't have to really take your hands off and mess with it a whole lot. Yeah, uh, the braking is behind this trap door here. There are four pads, shoes, or whatever you want to call them. And those can be turned on and off when they're loose and floppy. They are turned on and they will drag against the inside race here 
and provide your braking to the control the acceleration rate of the reel. Now, when you're making the adjustment to this knob, when you turn this knob, this inside brass piece is kind of a conical shape and you're able to move it up and down uh, relative to the side plate. What that's going to do is provide you a little bit of adjustment to the brakes and how much they interact with those brake shoes when you're making a cast. And that's really nice to be able to adjust that, right? It's not as big of a change as turning a whole brake on and off. That's why you only have four. So you really have like one shoe on, then you can adjust it to like one and a half. And you turn two shoes on, then you can get up to like two and a half. And you get that fine tuning between uh, an entire pad and you don't have to take the door open. So that's really gonna come into play when you, on that initial rip when you start to make that cast is how many, how many brakes are gonna be applying to it to keep you from over speeding that spool and causing a backlash. What it will not help with is if you make a cast with like an A rig or something and then the wind catches it and slows it down significantly. It's like a sail going through the air. It's not gonna do a good job. It's completely slowing it back down again to control backlash. That's where you start to get into the DC reels, the digitally controlled reels that can adjust for changes mid cast to what the reel is doing. Um, so that this is an excellent braking system. It's on most of the higher end Shimano's and it does get better from there when you start talking about DC's. But this is definitely tunable. It's nice to have the external adjustability of the Corrado and I've had good luck with it. Now we are going to look at the SLX version of their brakes. So these are VBS brakes. They've been around forever. Back going back to like the old Bantam Corrados had a very similar style. But the VBS braking system is a little bit different. There is zero external adjustment on the base model SLX. Where you get into it is uh, there's it's a little bit more adjustable, but there's no external adjustment, which has six pads on it and three of these are on three of these are off i don't go in here a whole lot i don't find that i miss the ex external adjustment a whole lot because i consistently throw pretty similar baits on this particular rod itself so like i'm throwing a dark sleeper here this is a three quarter ounce i'll throw a uh, half to three quarter ounce jig on it i throw common baits that have very similar aerodynamics to them and uh, they all cast very similarly so Given that, I don't have to do a whole lot of variation here on playing with the brakes. I can kind of set it. I can do a little bit of tweaking with the cast control knob and adjust the actual preload on those spool bearings. But in general, I don't miss having external brake adjustment on this particular reel because I'm using constant baits. With that, I'm gonna close out our conversation here. Um, the SLX and the Corrado are both very good reels. I use them every time I go out and I really enjoy the both of them, especially the price point of the SLX is going to be very tough to beat. It is a very good Shimano reel, but it does have some disadvantages compared to the higher end reels. If I'm just throwing the Stark Sleeper on it, I'm not winching fish in, I've got 14 pound leader on it, no problem. SLX all day long, it will last very well. If you start talking about a Corrado and you want to load it down with a 6, 8, 10 XD, you want to start frogging with it that's when you're gonna want the advantage of the, the additional durability and efficiency that you get with the Corrado components, the additional bearings and the micro module cut gears. When it comes to casting distance, now I'm gonna get a little bit subjective on you. Um, I think they both cast the same. I find no real benefit to it. The external adjustment on the Corrado is, it is a nice to have, but not a must have. I would say casting distance, they're the exact same. Uh, I can attune them just however I want it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd appreciate a like to the video and a subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see the next one. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.